Hey guys, it's Weather Dog today, and today we'll be talking about severe storms possible for um, parts of Texas and Oklahoma, that area down here. Uh, it's going to move east, and it's going to probably get possibly some severe da weather down in the east area. And we could be looking at some isolated severe weather for this area here. Um, and, yeah, no, maybe I'll put that a little bit more west, so probably in this area here. Sorry about that. Um, so we could be looking at some isolated severe storms for Colorado. And Colorado has been just getting a bunch of snow lately, but we could be looking at some severe weather for them now. Okay, now, well, enough talking. It's going to be around February 2nd and February 3rd, so well, let's go take a look at that. Um, so we got it's February 1st. Now, we're going to watch this disturbance out here. Poof, right here. Out here, it's going to move down, and it's going to go right, this is that. That's the track of this low pressure. Now, you're going to watch up there, and it's going to kind of go down, down in California. Two low pressures are going to develop. Poof, and poof. Why am I saying poof? I don't know. Um, And they're going to move off. Your main low pressure, is what we're going to be focusing on, is this one right here. That's your main low pressure that we're going to be focusing on the most. Um, okay, so you got some showers and possibly a few thunderstorms if we have enough unstable atmosphere. Um, a few thunderstorms popping up, but mostly showers. Um, and that's going to kind of... Um, you got more showers and thunderstorms for this area here. Um, and you could be looking at a few thunderstorms for Missouri and Illinois if that moisture gets that far south, um, that far down. North, sorry. And that's going to kind of say the same. You can see the dark green start to develop, and boom. Now it's turning into a squall line type mode. Now, I'm actually going to look at the the European model, because I don't really like the GFS model, because it doesn't really tell the truth. No, I shouldn't say the truth. I, sh I should not say the truth, but it doesn't really tell accurate forecasts. I like using the European model better, but, okay, now let's get right into it. Um, So we're on the first, the second. Now you're going to watch this low pressure right here in um, New Mexico, right there. Now it's going to kind of meander around, but you can see that main channel of precipitation right through Dallas and Fort Worth. You can see that right there, that little channel um, that in Texas. Um. Then you get you get some showers. Now I was looking, and the instability was early, and what that mean when I'm saying is it, er, it early, it's early. What I'm saying by that is it the instability shows up early, and when that happens, that is giving the t that is giving the atmosphere or giving the instability time to set into the atmosphere, and what that usually does is that makes the atmosphere more unstable when it just sitting there in the atmosphere. Um. And you do have a decent amount of instability going all the way up. So you, in that area here, you can have a decent amount of instability. When you have that, you're going to probably get some early severe storms popping up. And that's why, that's when that severe storm possibility comes in. You can see these yellow dots out here in parts of Oklahoma and parts of Kansas. You can see those yellow dots. Those are going to, those are going to be good Um Possibly some small severe thunderstorms. So now let's go out one more, and you can see a squall line starts to develop. Now it goes. You're gonna want to watch just down here as your dry line gets closer. Um, it's not. It's also a cold front, but more of a dry line type setting. But you gotta have your cold front there. Your warm front's probably gonna be way out here by the time it starts to. Get out, because you can see there's showers and thunderstorms all the way up in parts of, what is that, Idaho? In that area down there. So, oh, not area up there, sorry. So, that's good. Um, so, you get your squall line starting to develop. Now, that's going to move off, and that's going to... And it, you can see it's not a broken up squall line either. It's a more organized squall line. When you have that, you're going to get more of a wind threat than a tornado threat. When you have broken up squall lines, it's usually how they're like, 
they're like broken up they're not perfectly lined they're like sections and stuff when you have that your tornado threats a little bit higher but when they're organized and they're a straight line going through no breakups in them which you're seeing right now that's usually indicating that they're the tornado threats probably pretty low the hail threats probably going to be moderate and now in this whole area down in this whole area up here um your hail threats probably going to be pretty high, moderate your wind threat's going to be extra heavy it's going to be extra high down here where that squall line's supposed to move in um uh, because I was looking, and your low-level jet comes right through that area, and that's going to produce a lot of wind. And then it's going to move off into the east, and you can see more organized squall line. Now, that's as far as I can reach with the European model, So, but it's more, um, more accurate. Nope. I want to look at the dew points really quick, if I can go to the dew points. Okay. Dew points is the moisture in the area. The moisture. Um, okay. Single image. I'm going to go to forecast loop if it'll let me click on this. Okay. Forecast loop. Okay. Now, for severe weather, you only need around 60 and above dews. Um, and so you're going to watch this here. So we go through. Was that first? You can see that nice, that um, first layer starting to move in. That light green, dark green layer. And that's going to reach up. And what I mean by this is your severe weather threat's pretty low, but it's definitely not canceled out. You got some moisture up there. This is the early stages of this moisture. It's going to get darker up there. And here, here comes that, um, what I said about that um, severe weather threat for parts of Colorado. <clears throat> it does not look like your moisture gets up there. So, sorry, my prediction goes a little bit more east. Um, your severe weather threat for that area of the north is probably going to be right here. Right in the dead center of all that moisture. Um, you got parts of Arkansas, pretty much all of Missouri, parts of um, western Illinois, um, uh, parts of northeast uh, Oklahoma. So you got a nice area down there, but you the bulk of the moisture is going to be down here. So it's going to stay south. That's the bulk of your moisture is going to stay south. Um, okay, so let's go out. It's going to kind of channel out. And then... And that's as far as I can reach. But um, if we got purples starting to show up, if we had purples in the region, I would really start to consider... Um, a big severe weather outbreak, but we don't quite have purples, but we do have some light blues and dark blues, which is obviously resembling some good amount of moisture. I want to look at the temperatures, because if a cap starts to develop, we need at least above 70 degrees to start eroding that cap away. And I don't, if we have 60 degrees and a cap develops, it's a boom. I meant a bust. It's no severe weather for that day. Maybe a few thunderstorms. Maybe small hail, but that's it. So it's first. And you've already gotten some 60s in that in Texas and Oklahoma. And then you got some 70s starting to pop up. This is only the second. Now it's nighttime. And poof. Um, you get nice temperatures, 60s. I'm not quite seeing the 70s yet. Where are the 70s at? So this is going to be more of a nighttime situation. And I'm looking at it right now. It's going to be more of a nighttime situation. I just realized that cold front does not get you good. If you live in Texas and stuff, um, Dallas, 60 degrees, and that cold front has already moved through now. So, and also, spring's starting to come up, which means all these colder temperatures, it's going to warm up. It's starting to warm up for much of the north, um, northeast in that area down here, it's starting to warm up. You still have a nice channel of cold air, but that's going to disappear here within a few days. Um, you've only got a good amount of um, temperatures. Now I'm going to look at the GFS model and look at the instability and the low level jet stream.
Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at surface-based cape. Now, <clears throat> for severe weather, you only need around 750 for severe weather. Um, so this is the first. No, nothing really. And then you got that little tiny plume of moisture. Okay, now this is what I was talking about, some severe weather possible for this region here. You have instability coming in. You can see that instability starting to come in there. It's a really little amount, but it's definitely not enough. That's that's pretty good amount of instability, especially for the north. Um, so Missouri, you could be looking at a few isolated severe storms, but our greatest concern is going to be down here, where the more um, the better amounts of instability are down here in east. Okay, so sorry, let me change that. <clears throat> East is kind of out of this because the um, I was reviewing the instability tracks and it doesn't really track into the east as well as it does in Texas and Oklahoma. So east is not really looking too good for some severe weather, but you could be looking at a wind. So yeah, severe weather is possible for the east, but it's more of a Texas and south central outbreak. Um, and you start to get, you've got instability, a good amount of instability for that area. And it's going to skyrocket up. You can see that right here. You got blues, dark blues in um, parts of Kansas. So that's pretty good. And then it's going to kind of channel out. <clears throat> and when this happens, that's how you, that's how you know your dry line is going to start cutting off the circulation of instability. And then that's when your severe weather threat kind of diminishes because the instability is not pretty. It's pretty low in the east. So that now I want to look at the 500 millibar um uh, low level jet stream now you don't you, you don't really need a specific amount for severe weather um at least above 40 knots is pretty decent um <clears throat> but anything above 40 knots is going to be pretty good for severe weather if this will load in really quick I will be able to show you it's not looking like it's going to load in here. If you haven't already, go to like and subscribe if you like my videos and comment if you think I should improve anything in my videos. Um, I would really appreciate it. Um, anyways, so let's go out. This is the first. I really want to start seeing those purples starting to come in. Now it's the second. There we go. Okay, so your, your, um, your wind shear is going to come from the south this time, which is kind of weird. Um, but... You've got a good amount of um, wind shear right there in that little pocket, but your bulk wind shear is going to be down there, and that's, I think, 70 knots. 60, 65, possibly dark dark purples, 70 knots, which is really good because it's way above um, 40, which is what I'm looking for. Um, it's a second, 12. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, now we'll go out, and that instability, that wind shear is not really getting there, and that's why I'm gonna go switch right back over to the European model because they do wind, they, uh, what is that ball five hundred bill bar, um, wind shear. <clears throat> I think the European model really has this planned out really well. Um, I think that your the European model is gonna be telling the truth here. GFS model is not really giving me some help. Um, man, what the heck is, why is it not loading in? There we go. <clears throat> okay, so, there we go. Um, it's the 29th, um, let's go out first. Okay, this is the 2nd of 12th. Now, never mind. GFS kind of has it down. I'm going to delete that ad really quick, um. We have 35, 40 knots for much of this region down here. You got some purples in there, so that's 60 knots. Um, that's pretty good. Um, well, what the heck? Okay, we go out. Boom. That's what I was looking for. The, right when we get to that third where the main development is, that nice plume of wind shear just blows up in that region. That is 70, even 80 knots possible. Um, <clears throat> so that's really good. 
That's what I seen. When this squall line mode starts to develop, probably developing right here, your little plume of instability, uh, your wind shear, it's going to really cut off, and it's going to become a lot of wind shear for this area. So you'll see that right here. As that squall line moves off, um, your wind shear blows up. And that's what usually happens with squall line modes. <clears throat> and that's as far as I can reach. So your squall line is probably way in front. Your squall line is probably right here. But it's still getting access to those reds, which is really good. <clears throat> Anyways, um, I think that's going to be it for today. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my videos. And comment if you think I should improve anything in my videos. Have a great day.